We talked with Martin Schrietinch, who is a businessman, a TV host, and the chef at Vincent's. We talked about slow food movement, his experiences meeting prominent people as Queen Elizabeth, George Bush and emperors, as well as the importance of the ingredients of the food. He also has 14 chickens. Hello, this is the Chat Chamber podcast by Riga Graduate School of Law. We are very happy to host Martin Schrietinch, who is a very prominent, I would say a prominent personality in, in Latvia. And uh, yeah, something else perhaps to say. Maybe you have something to say about yourself. Uh, if you ask my brothers, they start arguing um, uh, Yuridiski about the word prominent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> I hope our listeners <laughs> don't. They say, say you? <laughs> prominent? <laughs> what about us? No, uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. It's, it's nice to be here. And uh, <clears throat> as you can see, I'm. I'm relaxed and very, very comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. But yeah, uh, I think, uh, you, know, you know, even um, even if it might, the first question might be for our listeners. So Martin Shreetinj, why Martin Shreetinj in the Chat Chamber podcast? But uh, but as we know, Martin Shreet, uh, Martin Shreetinj, you have been, of course, a very, uh, you have had some involvement with RGSL. And uh, perhaps that could be something that we can ask you. If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't be sitting here. Yeah. <laughs> tell, tell us, how, how, what is your involvement? Uh, my involvement here is I opened the place. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like I've, I've married many couples also. <laughs> <laughs> but it was me all those, all, all those years ago that um, when the current princess of Sweden was here, um, I was... The chosen one. <laughs> oh, that sounds good. <laughs> yes, indeed. The chosen Martin Schrichting is the chosen one, uh, <laughs> who who made this uh, place a success as it is today. Uh, what what did you feed them? Um, you know, we're going back in time now. We're going back in time. But on every floor, mm -hmm. uh, on every location. It was something different. It wasn't just a, a fluschet. It wasn't a boring thing. It was uh, aluminium things right in front, done right in front of your eyes, mm -hmm. like a magician's work. I would say that cooking is uh, some sort of, you know, magic. Mag there is some sort of magic in there because uh, when you go and explore new tastes, tastes, it's like going on a trip that's why when people travel i feel that is why they go to a, you know a specific location for example to spain or france yes. they know that some i don't know seafood come come from there and that's you're exactly right the sun is the same place all over the world mm -hmm. and so wherever you go you you have the sun but i think people look forward to maybe the the, the traditions customs that are there but mainly the food because they want to try something different, and food excites excites people, and uh, we all do that. We should do that three times a day. Uh, yeah, definitely. I just um, I went back in my head to one of the trips I had with my family friends. We were two families going on a trip, and my my dad and my mom they always say that you when you go to a trip on a trip you have to try the food that is there. But the other family didn't think that way. They wanted to go to McDonald's uh, in Spain. You and just used a naughty word. You should wash out your mouth with soap now. Uh, <laughs> don't use that word. You know, the M word. <laughs> yes. And, and, you know, your story and uh, your point of view, I, got, I went back to my memories and... Uh, I think it. I think that's the wrong thing to do. It is the wrong thing I, to do. Yeah. My my question is, uh, to what extent can you influence uh, people's personal not per, well yeah well per people's uh, emotions and ambiance in, in some kind of uh, uh, an event for example with food and and then how do you do that? Um, looking at what's the occasion, mm -hmm. what's the situation, and mainly the most important thing. What's the most important thing? It's the budget. Yeah, true. <laughs> true. Definitely. It's what you can do. It's mm -hmm. what you can do. And get to know the, the organizers, get to know what kind of people they're going to be, and do something 
Um, my, my, my motto is only the best, not the second best. Mm -hmm. Try and do this. Then, then I don't want to do it. Then I don't want to do, do it. Um, but it's communication, communication with the other people to, to get the feeling is what they want. I can think of one thing, uh, and you can, might think of another, and we have to come to some. I have to persuade you, and uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you have to you have to agree <laughs> that that's the best because uh, I, I think I have the experience to know what's the best. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. But have you ever been in a situation, maybe in your early days when you were trying something new, and it didn't taste the way you wanted it to, or people? didn't appreciate as much as you thought that this food is amazing and how did you react to that no point? i think i think my first years i'm looking back in my first years i think i made more people happier than i am making them today why so <laughs> people are getting more stubborn and they think they know better and also because they travel a lot mm -hmm. and they think let's say let's say for, for instance um a risotto in italy i had a risotto in italy and what you've made here is not what I had in Italy, but it depends what kind of risotto they had in Italy, because there's good risottos and there's bad risottos, and there is the backstreet risottos, and then there's the farm risottos. So people really think they know more than they let, than they, they, they let out. Let so on basically, to be. they uh, relate to what they have experienced, not knowing that there are, you know, many varieties of it and mm -hmm. that they maybe should try many varieties of uh, the food to understand the differences. Yeah, no, uh, a little example, I went to, I was in Madrid, I was with some of my chefs and we went and we wanted to a piella. Everywhere, everywhere we went, no, that's not good, that's not good, mm -hmm. that's not good. And you think, but in Spain, it should be good. But there's the tourist traps. A lot of tourist traps. There's a lot of chefs that are cowboys, um, that there should not be chefs at all. Um, the same thing in Latvia. There's a lot of people calling them chefs that they're, they're not really chefs, they're the cowboys. So it's very, very difficult uh, profession that I'm in. Um, I have to please everybody. You have to please everybody. But if there's a room of 20 people, and one person complains, and they've all had the same, and uh, 19 people say the yeah, food's great, I've, I've done my job. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to ask more about the intention in, in, in the food you make and, and the intention that the food uh, that people also consume. And I understand that you are, uh, you know, a believer in slow food. Yes. So how does it, uh, how does it show? <laughs> a, a, a broad question. I know. Uh, well, you know what slow food is. Well, it's, it's. I think it is fundamentally about the intention of of what you eat, and it's not just that you you know put something in your mouth and digest, but it's really understanding it's, what you eat and do. Well, it. I'm I'm uh, I'm the, the president of Slow Food Riga, mm -hmm. um, although I don't follow it all the way 100 percent. Because slow food means local, local, yeah. traditional, seasonal, and fair to the farmer. Um, local meaning you have to have the best. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the local is not the best. It's a better one in France or a better one in Italy. So I, I, I cheat a little bit. <laughs> Well, it's local on a European level, at least. It is. It is. Yeah. Um, it all started. <coughs> it all started. It'll be what about twenty six, twenty seven years ago, mm. um, when that naughty word that you used said, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> beginning with the m m m m, <laughs> opened opened up. Uh, I don't know why they call them restaurants because nobody serves you there. You have to go mm -hmm. to the counter. I think a restaurant is where you're looked after and uh, yeah, somebody comes to uh, serve you. But uh, that company opened on the Spanish steps in Rome, the restaurant. And then fast food was not something in Italy which was uh, 
the popular at that time, but mm -hmm. then, but we know what uh, America is and fast food is. And they came into Italy, and there's this one chappy, Carlo Petrini. Uh, he, what he did, he started a protest. And the thing is, I was at the protest here when the first one opened in Latvia, <laughs> oh. carrying a placard wow. also. Yeah, but I should have gone as far as Carlo Petrini did. Um, he got a lot of the farmers around the local area, and what they did, a fantastic, fantastic big spread there. Everybody came and called the press conference. I'm getting goose pimples now. Uh, <laughs> and they said, if these, if you allow these, this, this place and lots of other places to open like this, all what you see on this table will disappear. Yeah. It will all disappear. And that's where the word slow food came in. That's where it was first started. The headquarters in Bra in Italy, in Piemont, um, and it's still going, going strong today. And every two years, there's a conference, Terra Madre, Mother Earth, in, in, um, in Italy, uh, Salon de Gusto, where from all over the world, all over the world, there come farmers, come chefs, come children um, to, to support this uh, slow food movement. Mm -hmm. I think last time it was 154 countries participated. And it was a fantastic, uh, it's a fantastic uh, organization every two years, which the Italian government support, mm -hmm. the local authorities support, the province supports. And I, I would be so happy <coughs> if something like that happened over here. Mm -hmm. But, but mm -hmm. <laughs> unfortunately... Are there some kind of, I don't know, similar at least, initiatives in Latvia or I've in I've tried. <laughs> okay. I have tried. I have worked with uh, Riges Duome. I've tried to work with some ministers from Martin Roos this time. Um, a little, a little, they give you a little support, but they're not going all out like they do in Italy. Mm -hmm. And that's what's missing here. Could it be related to the understanding and importance of food? Uh, what is um, in the state as you know as an entity because when you think of Italy it's uh, it's thinking of oh good food eating in the evenings in a restaurant spending time with family cooking but in Latvia is it is it on that high level uh, could it be that we are just different as human beings. I think we, we're different in that respect. Uh, we were in the Soviet Union and that was kind of slow food then, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, we sat around the family table and that's also what slow food is, sharing around the family table. Mm -hmm. um, but then uh, the Iron Curtain fell down and everybody was wanting what's out in the West, what's out in America. Definitely. And that took over. That took over, and now with all this advertising and false adver a lot of false advertising, convenience, people are not thinking about themselves in that respect, what they're consuming, but make life easier for themselves. So definitely, it's 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 like I don't know a scar. Uh, it's just like you are going after for to what you didn't have. And it still hasn't ended at this point. Mm -hmm. I, I want a little example. My mother, my mother taught me, whenever you visit somewhere, you always bring a, a small gift. And I brought you one. Oh, that's Aww. so adorable. Thank you. These are oh, oh. grass-fed. Oh, my God. This is, I think, very, very great. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> and that's you. That's me. <laughs> it's so great. So this? nice. The no. package, I think the packaging is as important as the... Oh, yes, oh. It, the packaging is beautiful, but it's not very practical. Uh, you put that in a bag. Who cares about the practicity? <laughs> it's recyclable. It's that practicality. is, I think, very... It, it's also, it I think, goes well with... Yeah. with now, the I have... Now, this here's an example. I have 14 Oops. chickens. Mm-hmm. I know what those chickens eat. Yeah. I know where those chickens came from. Uh, they, they are spoiled chickens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they eat a lot of my um, scraps from mm -hmm. uh, salads from work. I give them cottage cheese. I break eggshells. 
their own eggshells. I, mm. I run them down, put them in the cottage cheese, uh, organic grain, and they are, that is what you call a happy chicken. Uh, Limey gavis, they are. Mm -hmm. they are. Uh, not those chickens that you see in the big factories with barbed wire fences going around. I thought that was to keep, the, uh, so the chickens don't escape, but it's for us not to see what's happening inside there. Now, uh, what, what's going to happen here, I'm going to spoil you, because after you've eaten these eggs, you won't want other eggs, you'll yeah. just want these. Because there is a phenomenal difference, a phenomenal difference in the taste and the quality of, of that egg. And that's what we should have the best, because food should be like medicine. Food, not chemicals, but medicine, but pure, pure natural food. And that's what keeps us healthy and wise and... I, that's why I love my grandma. Yeah. Uh, she is uh, so, you know, she's so kind and generous. And every time when I go to my countryside, she always has local eggs, mm -hmm. uh, local cheese, everything from people she knows. Yes. And she g gives it all. And afterwards, when you come back to city, of course, she gives us bags with, you know, yeah. bought stuff mm -hmm. with food. But it, it ends at some point, and then you have to go to the store, and the taste is totally different. I, I can agree. Absolutely, absolutely. Slow food is nothing new. We've been doing it for centuries. It's the fast food that is new. Uh, the biggest, the biggest, the biggest thing is people say, "Yeah, but it's organic. It costs more." Um, it doesn't cost more. It's it's it's. The, it is the value of what it is. I mean, saying fair to the farmer, mm -hmm. to, for the farmer to get, get it. What is um, this commercial food? It's too cheap. It's too cheap. It's not pure. Um, uh, my, my, my best example is people say it's too expensive. If you go into a shoe shop, mm -hmm. a beautiful department store shoe shop, or a special speciality shoe shop, you don't go in there and say, please, can I have the cheapest shoes that you've got? You don't. You want something which is comfortable, something that looks good, something that you can carry for a long, long time, not throw away after a while. And it's, it's the same, same, same com comparison. I can totally see it. Mm -hmm. Because you want to give yourself the best. Yeah, exactly. And the food yeah. is one of it, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah. What are your personal preferences on food? Perhaps oh, shoes. <laughs> on shoes. On shoes. On shoes. No, but on, on food. Gucci, Gucci. <laughs> show them. Show them. <laughs> no, but, uh, but, uh, but you know, but really, probably, you know, uh, your experience with food has developed some kind of a taste, but not in the, of course, literal sense. Um, I, I think it all started in childhood. Mm -hmm. um, we, uh, after uh, my, my parents' is, uh, um, escaped uh, mm -hmm. Latvia, went through Germany, and ended up in England. My mother uh, had a say. There was a saying. My mother had three loves. First one was the garden. The second one, her husband, and the third one was the kids. Four, four, four brothers. We were, mm -hmm. and we couldn't understand this. Uh, but through the garden, she looked after us. And she said later on in life, it was to make sure that we got the best. Not the second best, but the best. Um, so I started this in, 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 in my youth, uh, to, to have the cleanest. And then uh, when I started working, of course, I was working um, in one of the top, top restaurants in, in my hometown. Was the only one, <laughs> 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 uh, and I, I had a, a hard chef. Um, he was a slave driver. Um, he was nothing on Gordon. Uh, Gordon Ramsay is nothing on him. He was wor he was worse than Gordon Ramsay. Um, <laughs> but he taught me discipline, and he taught me what quality means. So through my mother and my first chef, I've come along to what is the best. So I've never tried to cheat anybody and always try to give the best. But you are a vegetarian, right? Um, I taste, I, I'll taste meat because I'm this crazy chef who doesn't <laughs> taste the meat. But I've been a vegetarian maybe five or six years. Mm -hmm. uh, a vegan as well. 
Great. Because How? It's, why? Why? Uh, it all started. Um, a chef is also like a doctor, like a hospital. <laughs> Uh, and all these people coming, I don't eat this, and I don't eat gluten, I don't want that, and I don't do this. And, and I, I wanted to see what it's like yeah. to be a vegan. So uh, as a chef, I want to see the other side of my, my, uh, my paying guests, of what, what it was like. And uh, I started in Lent for the 40 days, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Then I went to China. And there was nothing I could eat there. Nothing. Why so? It's, 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 um, I don't want to swear here, but <laughs> 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 you, you have a look at some films of the markets and what they're eating there, and I just couldn't eat it. And uh, I, was, I was in a place, and I had to cook, cook, cook myself for myself. Uh, and then I went to Japan, and it's completely different. I mean, they are, that is quality, that is number one. They respect their food. Um, and then I, I started to eat the, the fish. I think uh, what I have heard about these, I, I, have, I have heard about these blue zones. And then in Japan being uh, one specific region, I don't remember specifically, but mm -hmm. being the blue zone in the sense that there are people with very long life expectancies there. Mm -hmm. And w what is observed there is that there is a lot of fish in their diet, yes. a lot of uh, legumes, uh, a lot of yeah. really like uh, also fruits. And and these portions also, they are not like enormous, right? They, this, yeah, yes. they're, they're, you know, they're... Yeah. It's. It, I think, uh, there, there is this kind of an eighty percent rule in uh, from mm -hmm. in their culture that uh, if you eat, that you should only eat when you're eighty percent full, yeah. and then wait, mm -hmm. right? And I think this is very. The Japan for me is the greatest culinary experience that I've ever exper experienced. It is the best. Mm -hmm. uh, there's nowhere else better, and I've I've traveled around a lot, but mm -hmm. Japan is my favorite place for for food. Your your traveling experiences probably have also made many encounters in your traveling experiences. You have made many encounters uh, with uh, also prominent personalities. Mm -hmm. If we go back to the word, and uh, perhaps you can name what what has been what have been some colorful experiences. Uh, um, uh, <laughs> I think the first first one uh, interesting was George Bush. Okay. He's been here twice, and mm -hmm. I've met him twice, and I had to. I have to give him something local, and I studied what he likes. And he's Texan; he likes his steak. Okay. And in Latvia, at that time, and even even today, we don't have a really, really decent steak. We don't have the right breeds. It takes generations. Uh, to, to get to the level of uh, the quality. And I remember <laughs> in, I got, uh, in Zaube, Ayelita, mm -hmm. she helped me to dry age beef. And it wasn't done at the time. And it was illegal <laughs> at so? the time. Because Bebe uh, there says three days <laughs> from slaughter has to be. And here I've got it for 30 days. I've been holding it. Uh, <laughs> uh, that that was a phenomenal challenge yeah. uh, to feed George Bush. Um, interestingly, I've had a lot better steaks than than what I served him. A lot, lot better. Mm -hmm. uh, but this, he he got up from the table. They, they left. And then he came back. He dropped Condoleezza Rice and well, mm -hmm. our president, and he came back. And you, and he pointed his finger at you. I want to thank you for this fantastic dinner. Aww. Great, that's and, so good. And I said, I'm sorry, sir. It was, it wasn't just me. It was a team, uh, a team event. He says we have something in common. Bring them all out. <laughs> <laughs> half of them, half of them had the pants down already, getting changed. <laughs> 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 it's a comedy of errors happening there, <laughs> and half of us were were uh, there. He and he talked to everyone individually. 
which is uh, um, it was a experience that wow, the most powerful in the man in the world, and he starts talking to me, and uh, he says that um, I said I hear you're looking for a chef in the White House. I said, I'm your man. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, next time you're in Washington, I'll arrange that you come to the White House. And he kept his word. He kept wow, his amazing. word. Um, I had a tour of the White House, mm -hmm. uh, walked his dog, and it was <laughs> phenomenal. But that was the food. The food that I served him, I know I could have done a lot better but not with the products that I had in Latvia. That's why when I say um, you use something, you say Latvia is, the, is, 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 is great, but um, it's not always the best. Mm -hmm. It's not always the best. And I, I really want to <coughs> bring up this, this, this about the mistakes. Um, uh, Latvia is still not quite there. We still have generations, quite a few generations to go. And the beef that I have used in, in Vincent's restaurant, it comes, in a way it's local, it comes from Gotland. Mm -hmm. And it's seven generations growing the Simgus beef. Um, interestingly as well, it's the small farmer, I, and I got to meet him. I've been there twice to the farm, and he just, he can't, supply everybody with it because he's a small farm. But he's, uh, he's sending it to me here in Latvia and he's sending it one other place. It's something to do with this building as well. He sends it to the Royal House in Stockholm. Hmm. And uh, when I was uh, feeding uh, the king um, in Stockholm and here in Latvia, I, was, I gave him his own beef. Did he know that? Did he, he, know did. Okay. he did. He um, did. I was not, or wasn't allowed to write on the menu for, uh, when it was uh, at the Blackhead's house mm -hmm. that what it was, uh, but he recognized it. Did he? How how did it go? How did he recognize it? Did he, he, ask he knows his taste. He has a phen phenomenal taste. Wow. Yeah. Fascinating. It is. So it's like wine. It's like wine. You can mm -hmm. tell. What wine, what year, which region? It's the same with beef. It's the same with beef. Now you go to the central market here and you say, What's that? It's beef. Yeah, but where's it from? It's local. How, 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 how long has it been aging? What's, it's, it's still fresh. Uh, feel it's still warm. <laughs> That's where we are still today. You have met also Elizabeth II, yes. right? Yes. How how was it for you? What what did you cook for her? I cooked a pheasant, a pheasant. local pheasant. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. And from the protocol perspective, is there a, some sort of um, way uh, how to approach this kind of person? Also, when you talk with them, or do you, did you feel at some point that you know? She's from a different, you know, from different breed. Or like, how does it feel to meet that kind no, of person? Uh, you know, it's interesting. <laughs> you've met so many. you met so many of them. And the first time I met Queen Elizabeth when I was eleven years old. Mm. Wow! And so it wasn't the first time. So we had something to talk about. She was in Corby, where I came from, my hometown. Mm. Um, I'd met with uh, Andrew. But there's no, nothing to boast about there, is there? <laughs> <laughs> I met with Charles five times. Uh, the only royal I, uh, Edward, the only royal I haven't met is uh, Queen uh, Princess Anne. So it was so comfortable to talk to her and to Philip. Um, it was just like we're, we're doing it right here now. Mm -hmm. It was. I didn't feel that she was the Queen of England. Like and the, I the queen think of people, or like that. She was. It was just, just so natural. And mm -hmm. how did you? How, so how would you say you communicate uh, with people through food? 
Okay, so one of one of the thing what I heard is that you you know you do your research beforehand. For mm -hmm. example, what Bush likes, where yes. is of course he from, mm -hmm. and, and then what would be the appropriate food. But is there other some kind of techniques or ways how you can communicate with food with the people you, who will consume it? You also um, when Macron was here mm -hmm. just now recently uh, in October, yeah, was it here? Um, I, I went around my, out of my way to find out what he, what he liked. Um, uh, for example, from his wine, um, from his wine cellar, from his, his uh, sommelier, his uh, wine expert, we found out what he likes, what wine he likes, so we, we tried to get as close to that within the budget. Mm -hmm. <laughs> budget is plays a, a big part. But um, I also found out that his um, his favorite dish was escalope of Ville Cordon Bleu. But it's not something that you give for a state dinner. It's not something you give for a state dinner. And I would have loved to give him uh, another dish that he likes, is Tête de Veau, which I would have loved to have given to him, the, mm -hmm. the head of the veal. The whole head, everything to do with the veal. I know the French would have loved it. I would have loved to see the reaction of the Latvian faces. <laughs> they, uh, they wouldn't have. Uh, so you go all, go all around the way, and your job is to you aim to please. Mm -hmm. you aim to please. That, would you say that is one of the main val like main goals of of the profession of a chef? Yeah, you have to find out. Yes, what the other say that one other value is to challenge also some uh, perceptions of taste and what goes to get uh, what goes well with something else oh if let's say right now I'm working on the lamb this is coming up Easter and I'm, t I'm looking at uh, various lambs uh, the, the most famous lamb in the, in the world I think is the Pyrenees uh, uh, suckling lamb, it's only about just had the mother's milk, but it's it's it's, it's very very expensive, but it's wow, it's it's fantastic, it's uh, it's uh, like the, the best bottle of wine that you can um, can imagine. But then I'm also looking at local lamb, so I want to please everybody. Um, so I'm looking at the local lamb and the Pyrenees lamb. I'm experimenting right now. But would you say that this is something that challenges people or is it something just that uh, makes them get the best of the best? You want to get them. You want to get them the best and you want to show that you've put effort and work into it, not mm -hmm. just to stuck a hunk of meat and yeah. stuck a uh, rosemary or a uh, bit of garlic in there and throw it in the oven and hope for the best. You want people to say, oh, "Wow, this is this. I can't do this." <laughs> it's, it's, um, do you have your own favorite food, or you like to explore my, new tastes? Uh, I get this question asked the most, more than anything else. My answer is always the same: it's whatever is the freshest of brought into the kitchen that day. Mm -hmm. And right now, it's asparagus. Okay. Than asparagus it's, it is. It's a, but it's asparagus. Um, it's a, a German asparagus. Uh, not from Peru, not from Mexico, but I would never, never touch those. Why so? Okay. They're cutting down the rainforest. Mm -hmm. uh, they're destroying, destroying the, the yeah. fauna. Uh, they're being cut there, then they're being uh, processed. Yeah. processed there, then they're, they're by ship or by airplane, they're coming over to Holland, then they sit in the warehouse in Holland, then they get on a truck, and they go through Germany, through Poland, and, and then they end up here, in some warehouse here, and then they end up, after a while, still another while in the supermarket. And by that time, they're limp, <laughs> they're tasteless, the sugar turns to starch, they look, they look okay, but it's just like the eggs. They, all the eggs look the same. 
but it's what's inside, what's inside. And so uh, there's a massive, massive difference from from the asparagus from South America to to local asparagus here. And even when the Latvian asparagus starts, I think usually after Easter, mm -hmm. that is that is the best. Okay. Well, my my my, I had a question about uh, this. I, I well, I see that you have very much intention, of course, in your food, and it's inevitable as you are a chef. But what would be some tips or some things that you would recommend other people, perhaps even students, you know, uh, how to be more intentional with their food and how to cook that, perhaps? Also? Mm, we're going into a very, very <laughs> yeah. large range yeah. here. Um, <laughs> you go to your local farmer's market, and the best one now is like, uh, um, adopt, uh, adopt a farmer, say maybe, regularly. We go to the local farmer's market, and the best one right now is in um, Eidenskals, mm -hmm. the one that it moved from. Uh, I have to blow a little horn here. The first, first organic market I started many, many years ago in Old Riga. Uh, then we moved to Berg, Berg Bazaars, and there we had a, uh, every second week for 10 years, we had a slow food market, mm -hmm. slow food. If anybody was growing, doing anything commercially, growing commercially, that we would not let them in there. And overall, in this year, seasonally, we had about 60, 60 um, farmers there. We we had people who were saying, yeah, it's very expensive and that. Of course, it is more expensive. Of course, this is. Uh, it's naturally it is. But <coughs> you know, the biggest of our customers were pensioners. The pensioners knew uh, the quality. The quality. Yeah. And the thing is, you don't pile your plate up, like we were saying mm -hmm. there. You respect what you what you eat. You have to respect what you eat. Remember, <coughs> in the past. They built gods, gods, mm -hmm. <laughs> for uh, their foods, for the maize, for uh, <coughs> for the corn. They built gods because the people thanked, thanked it. Today, it's 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 a basic commodity. It is, them. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a question about uh, the restaurant Vincent. I know that for quite a while it's been a part of your life, and um, I I was wondering. Why the name Vincent? Where did it come from? <laughs> Every time I give a different dance. <laughs> <laughs> so there is no no one correct answer. It sounds good. <laughs> well, it sounds good. Yeah, I would agree. But there was some kind of intention when you were, you know, filling the papers out. And <clears throat> no, uh, you know, Vince. Before Vincent's restaurant started, there was already the Vincent's firm. It was a building firm. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, and what was happening, the stories of the history of Vincent on Elizabeth Street 19 was at that time I was working at the Bank of Latvia, uh, the film studio at Montes, and I uh, was consulting in a lot of places. And then uh, I started to consult uh, Vincent's. Vincent's which is supposed to be a small cafe with a gallery. The large hall was supposed to be the gallery mm. and uh, stu um, artist studio in the back. But once I get my foot in the door, <laughs> I took over. <laughs> I took over. And because the location is fantastic location. Mm, I agree. The location is great. Um, and I made it what it is, what it is today. And uh, according to the Nordic White Guide, the best, while well, I was there, the best in the Baltic states. So no Vincent van Gogh there. Yeah. Ah, but now, uh, you know, I was away for three years. I was kind of hooked uh, by another company uh, that didn't keep their promise. Uh, do you know, 
Not only that, they came from here. <laughs> they didn't learn much, did they? <laughs> they didn't learn much. <laughs> they studied here. <laughs> um, You're under pressure. <laughs> <laughs> You're teaching something wrong. <laughs> um, th then I said I was in invited to go back back to Vincent's, and uh, I said on condition we change the interior completely, change it. Um, they agreed. Um, now they re they regret it because again I put my foot in the door and uh, my. My, my friend, uh, the designer, he's completely transformed it. It's you will not recognize any of it. Um, it's it's you think you're in a in a mansion in uh, in old England. It's, mm -hmm. it's 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 so nostalgic. It's so romantic. It's so exciting. But the thing is, we've brought back the word Vincent's to its full meaning, and now. On the bar, there is what? Van Gogh. There's called the Goff Bar, that is Vincent's ear. Oh. And so you go nice. in there and you say, "What's this ear then, eh?" <laughs> <laughs> so we're an bringing spin. we're bringing back the. the mm. Vincent was an artist, and they say I'm an artist. And Beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So nice. What would you say is some the future of food? You because you know we are talking about this fast food being some kind something new, yes. and and the slow food being as a counterculture that wants the, to stick to it. The future of food, I think, we have to go back to our old roots. Mm -hmm. We have to go back to our old roots. Um, they're talking about insects and okay, I've done I've done ants. Uh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How? Well, I go in the forest mm -hmm. and put the stick in, <laughs> and, you know, and the ants come running up the stick, and okay. I shake them in a bucket. <laughs> then I bring them, bring okay. them to to Vincent's and uh, Cloudy, the girl that does to clean my vegetables, she goes crazy because the ants are running all over the place. <laughs> but no, ants, uh, the fantastic citrus uh, flavor, and they're so full of protein and uh, mm -hmm. I think that we will be eating a lot of the insect world in the future. So that would be one. Yeah. yeah. Because it's a part of, uh, a, a large part of um, food uh, in China, I know, they are eating insects. Uh, they are, I mean, I, I can eat an ant, I can, the first, the first person to do the ants was Reni Recepi in, um, in Norma. And that's why I also followed him, the first one I found to do crow. That's why I also did crow. I'm not doing anything myself, I'm um, following what's happening in the world um, from the best, from the top. Um, but uh, I forget the question again. <laughs> I was talking about China. Oh, China, China, yeah. But I was in China and I couldn't, I really couldn't. I could not touch anything out of the ordinary there. I Why? Could. It looked scary or you felt like it's not for you? Well, I'm glad I was a vegan then. <laughs> 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 but to eat the locusts and uh, snakes and cockroaches, uh, I'm not ready for but that as a, But as a chef, wouldn't you say that it's, a, it's just about how you prepare and present that food? Well, if it was the cockroach was crushed and sprinkled on something, yeah. I would. <laughs> and you wouldn't even notice, probably. I wouldn't. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but no. But you know, you t I remember I did. Uh, I go around some schools and I I, I, I do some lectures in schools mm -hmm. and some presentations. And I did uh, interesting one. I was doing one dish. It was slow food dish, and it was a symbol of slow food, and. I asked the, some people from the audience who would like to taste it. All the hands went up and I picked one girl out. She came and she tasted it. I said, how do you like it? She says, nice. I said, do you know what you ate? She says, no. 
because I saw her yawning in a telephone there, so I picked her. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I said, it was a snail. <laughs> she ran, ran all the way down the hall to the toilet and she threw it, threw up. <laughs> oh my God. But it's psychological as, yeah. as we see. Yeah. Oh it's God. a snail. I mean, it's escargot. It's so, so beautiful and romantic. So some people just can't do. People say they can't. Fred, frogs legs to look like babies' bottoms. <laughs> <laughs> they do. <laughs> But it's interesting, uh, fr frog's legs, I love frog's legs, uh, but fresh, French, uh, they've been grown in France. The majority of frog's legs, they come from China, frozen. I don't touch those. There is a big, big difference. Still, doesn't transportation spoil uh, many of the foods that uh, you... You know that a lot of the smoked eel you think is Latvian, mm -hmm. a lot of it comes from China in big containers here. But but still, so so the problem is that the food is frozen while it is transported. Of course, yes. Mm -hmm. mm. Do you have, as we are surrounded by books, do you have one or maybe many books that kind of have inspired you, not only in you know your career, but overall developed you as a person or defined you in some way? Um, my first the first, one of the main first books was Alice Waters uh, from Japanese in California. And she's my guru. And she's inspired me a lot. And why? Also, she was Slow Food uh, President of America. Uh, she tried. She tried to get um, the White House for not, a, not to grow cabbages and potatoes, but herbs and some things to present um, what the chefs could pick and present to for the state dinners. Um, in, interestingly, a lot of the presidents turned her down, the idea down, but the Obamas took, 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 her, took her up in it. And now there's a fantastic herb garden in the White House. I've tried to do the same in Latvia. I get <laughs> a brick wall. I get a brick wall. So Alice Waters, a lot what she does. She does works with schools um, and I uh, have the fortune to eat in her restaurant. Uh, and I've had the fortune to, to have met her quite a few times. And she's been here in Latvia. And nobody knows that. It's a secret, secret visit. So she's... She's one of my, uh, but uh, also the book um, on the line, uh, Grand Tastic from Alenia in Chicago. He was, uh, uh, I think he's one of the top chefs in America, young one, young guy. Um, and the story is of how he, he started losing his taste. He got cancer of the tongue. Mm -hmm. He didn't tell anybody. A chef having cancer and losing all taste, everything tasted like uh, sand. Mm -hmm. And it's a very inspirational uh, book that uh, he, 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 he thought his life had ended. Mm -hmm. It's like it, Beethoven, yes. without, without uh, exactly. hearing. Right? Yeah. Um, he's, he's inspired me a lot and I've had the good fortune to meet him quite a few times. Um, I remember once in Madrid Fusion, I met him, and he said he was at El, Bo he was at El Boli for th for three days. El Boli, of course, for for an Andre, the top top restaurant in the world for many many years. I said, for three days. You mean three years or three months? Three years? No, three days. I says, why three days? He says, I got everything I needed in three days. Mm -hmm. He's a genius. He's a genius. Um, to me, it's one of the best restaurants in the world. And the Nick Kakanis helped him, uh, his partner, business partner. He didn't know anything about food. And that's what I like. Uh, a partnership like that. Money and chef. 
so every everybody has their own like uh, yeah. competences. Yeah, and and they they're working together. They trust each other, and uh, he's he he had a fantastic operation, and he survived. And uh, but some things in wouldn't be couldn't be even uh, measured in money. But there should always be some kind of understanding, not only trust, but understanding from the financial side that yes, it might not look good on in numbers, but this will be something good, and so people will like that food. And you know, but no, yeah, money money plays a big part. The more you the more you invest, the more you'll you'll get out, and the more you'll get. Mm -hmm. You sitting here, um, if you and if you have to make a profit because <laughs> you have to pay the staff uh, and that is your main main asset is your staff you have to look after your staff and um, make them happy um, they'll blackmail you <laughs> 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 if you don't uh, but yeah it's, it's it's business it's business we um, we're here to make money. Everyone's here to make money, and uh, you reinvest it. You reinvest it, and that's how you keep going. But what makes your day? What What is a good day for you? When you say uh, at the end of the day, yes, this day was amazing. Um, you know, you don't have to. You don't have to. People come up and say, "Well, the nicest thing is to get a compliment." That's the nicest thing. But you don't have to get the compliment. You feel if you've done a good job. Mm -hmm. You feel it. And at the end of the day, you know, you, you're sweating and uh, you, you're tired and sick. You know it. You know you've had a good day without people telling you that you were great. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It's, it's, it's the, how things go smoothly and... Do you have any, you know, ways how you try to make it more fun, or, or you just, how is it for you to, you know, kind of guide uh, other chefs? Do you have your, you know, inside jokes how you, you know, try to, you know? Yeah, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. You have to take the piss kind of thing. <laughs> uh, you have to, you have to have humor. Um, you must have humor, and but you must also be strong and firm mm -hmm. at them both at the same time. But when it comes to work and uh, all the checks are coming in, you have to be very serious. There's no time for joking around. There's no time for joking around. But leading up to it and afterwards, then you you can joke around. The so. so would you say that, um, how would you say that the profession of a chef differs from the profession of an artist? And how does it differ from uh, the profession of being a, some kind of a craftsman? I don't, I, th I think we're all, all going to stand and say there that uh, <laughs> the same thing, mm -hmm. the same thing. Uh, you see, I see, I see the plate as a, a palette, and what you put on it, the way you put it on, the way you prepare it, it's the same. It's no different than being an, a, a painter or mm -hmm. or a, a silver um, jeweler. Or yeah. it's you can you zero in on it, and uh, so. If there would be some kind of suggestions as we go go back, what was said in the uh, in this uh, talk is that you would suggest people to firstly go to the local markets. Yes, that would be the first step. That's the first thing. What would be another thing, perhaps? Oh, but uh, yes, you, you know, there's there's another there's another thing. Um, you have to guess where I am. Uh, everything looks beautiful. Colors look beautiful. Everything is perfect. Everything is the same size. Um, but there's one thing missing. There's smell. Where am I? 
you're in the supermarket of the vegetable and fruit. It's, 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 it doesn't smell. It, it doesn't, doesn't smell. smell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, I've, 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 I worked in Jamaica for one year. Oh. I remember how the pineapple tastes. I remember. I remember it. I remember in, in, in Japan how, how the melon tasted. I remember it. It's, it's something implanted in you that triggers, triggers you. Um, if, if you eat, try and eat the best. Try and eat the best. Have you noticed um, in, in your experience with food, do you see the difference if something was made, you know, how to say, with love? You know, when mom or grandma cooks, you, you yeah. can feel it. Um, and do you practice it in your own, you know, career? Yes. There's, there's, <laughs> see, when, you, when, you, when somebody's saying, made with love, <laughs> I, say, I usually say it's a load of bullshit, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> No, two two examples. <laughs> There's a one company here in Latvia, big big trailer, it's made with love. <laughs> How can you make it with something with love, with mass produced? And in the kitchen, in a hot kitchen, you you have maybe sixty sixty four guests sitting there, and you've got just you got pots and pans and. Oh, fire and uh, the hobs going and you go you're sweating and you're crazy <laughs> I can see it's made of a laugh <laughs> but when granny does something at home that is made with love that is made with love yeah you're right <laughs> I, I just I just have experienced myself you know there are days when I'm tired and I don't give myself to the food when I'm cooking mm. I just feel the difference in energetic levels mm -hmm. And then there are days when I, I sing, when I'm cooking, I, I feel myself in the process. And afterwards, I think that people somehow, you know, your close ones, they notice, huh, this, this one's really good. And then you, yeah, I, I tried, I, I made with love. And yeah, I, <laughs> think, I, think, I think I think it's better to say it's made with respect. Yeah, with respect, respect. To, the, to the receiver and respect to the food I'm cooking. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that we are in a very good note, and uh, I think we may end with this, but... No, you can't, because my brother said, you have to mention me, me a f us a few times, Jans oh. and Andres. You, yeah. start, you started with your brother. <laughs> yes. Yeah, in the beginning, I otherwise, otherwise, they give me a hard time. They're older than me, you see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, so, of course. <laughs> what do they do? I'm still the baby of the family. <laughs> what do they do? Um, now they've retired, but uh, they're still, still, they've come back to, they've, they've, you know, it's interesting. Uh, I got, I got my chef back from London, Aris. I got my sommelier back from London. Um, oh my goodness, he's going to kill me. <laughs> What's his name? <laughs> Alvis. <laughs> <laughs> I've got my two brothers back from London, and I'm doing more than the government's doing. I think not, <laughs> not getting You're paid doing for a it. Job. It's Roland Slap, which was uh, the, the, getting his job was to get the sport to get the people mm -hmm. back to Latvia. I've done. I think I've done more than him. And not being paid for it, <laughs> but this, you know, yeah. it, I think it is very personal. Always this repatriation, right? I mm -hmm. think it is that you have this kind of something to present, something valuable that the person would like to be a part of, right? Exactly. Um, you know, I want, I'm doing a new Vincent's. I'm doing a new Vincent's. I can't do a new Vincent's with the old people that I, I had there, or the people that are here in Latvia. I have to get the fresh blood back pumping again, the heart again of Vincent's restaurant. Mm -hmm. You know, you can open a restaurant, put a lot of money into it, and gather around a lot of people, the local local people. It's going to be, it's going to be the same as any other restaurant. Yeah. But that's why I want to, to bring bring the new blood back into to Latvia, and 
I knew people train other younger ones, and that's what's 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 uh, missing here. This new blood, fresh blood in Latvia. Yeah. I I just um, I just got wondering about the whole thing. I, I, I remember when you were talking about your getting your brothers back. Yes. I got reminded of this um, this attempt by Latvian government. Uh, we I want you back. And I remembered with one of our guests, we were talking about it and uh, how it was actually a failure more than a success. Uh -huh. yes. And I, I, I got into a thought that maybe it's not about the government that much as we as human beings are cooperating and getting our close ones back trying to help them to find out to find jobs to make them make them come back make them stay here as we are you know this is our home it's one on one it's one yeah. on one and i think what the government was doing in general kind of boring um, an interesting la 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 and people yeah 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 it's it has to be an actual you know an actual how to say appealing emotional attempt of of recreating something of building something new something better better state mm -hmm. better obstacles for people so they want to come back, not just saying you come have, back. Yeah, you have to give them a reason to come back. Yeah, and definitely. You can't give general a reason. It has to be one-on-one. -on -one. What was your reason to come to Latvia? My reason? Yeah. It was, <laughs> you know, you've got, we've got a few more hours. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have quite a few different reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think because I was brought up to be a Latvian. Of course. Uh, and the other thing is I had a fantastic uh, opportunity to come to Latvia in 92. Well, I was here in 1991. Very with, early. With my mother. Actually. And then the American film company offered me a job here to do, uh, do the catering for a movie, Red Hot. Mm -hmm. If I knew then what happened, I know now I've been Hollywood okay. <laughs> because the producer of the movie was Paul Haggis who wow. since won, has won two Oscars and then he was unknown. Now I had a state with him and he liked me <laughs> <laughs> but the motherland, the motherland or the fatherland yeah. kept, kept, kept me here. So it was, you would say, unintentional, actually, you know, you started to... Ha yeah, because I had a great job in Canada, uh -huh. uh, it was doing great, but uh, this uh, film opportunity, I couldn't... Uh, my name is in title, on the titles. <laughs> great, great. <laughs> it turned out to be a B-rate movie. <laughs> ah. <laughs> what is the name of the movie? Red Hot. Red Hot, yeah. okay. I have to it. check it out. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. The, yeah, no, the titles. No, it, it, they, it was a, it was great. Uh, how rock and roll came into the Soviet Union, and you use, they used uh, Reagan Latvia's mm -hmm. the Soviet Union. Mm. Martin, I think this was a valuable interview. A bit of perhaps something different than than usually uh, seen in this podcast, but uh, nevertheless, I think you shared the passion. Uh, I thought I thought you were going to ask me some questions when I was in front of a judge. Uh, <laughs> no. You were three times. <laughs> I thought all that was going to come out. <laughs> we'll get the dirt on you. Absolute discharge each time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope it was more <laughs> relaxed than that, of course. And, 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 yeah, yeah. I, and I hope also that, uh, that our listeners gained something from this and, and perhaps thought, thought... And I think the most important thing here is that they perhaps just thought about what they eat daily and, and how they is, consume. That them. is the most, mm -hmm. most, most important. The interesting, my two brothers, so we're coming back in the picture, <laughs> <laughs> they eat nothing but meat and fat. Mm -hmm. And I'm vegetarian. <laughs> Completely different world. <laughs> what do you say about it? No, they 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 have their reasons. Okay. They have their reasons, and what they're doing 
is right. They've studied it. They've looked yeah. it up. They, they, they. But uh, we don't steal anything of each other. <laughs> you, except if, if you would have one dish, you would just separate the except parts. The eggs, <laughs> ex, except the eggs. Oh, yeah. Except the eggs. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Thank for you being very here. much. Yeah, thank you much. It's a pleasure. Thank it you. was a pleasure. Indeed. Thank you.